Library 300 and going to discuss the history of Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki syndrome, also known as Kawasaki disease, is an acute febrile illness of unknown etiology that primarily affects children younger than 5 years of age. Kawasaki syndrome was first described in Japan by Tomisaki Kawasaki in 1967, and the first cases outside of Japan were reported in Hawaii in 1976. Kawasaki syndrome occurs worldwide with the highest incidence in Japan and it most often affects boys and younger children. Kawasaki syndrome may have a winter-spring seasonality and community-wide outbreaks have been reported occasionally. In the continental United States, population-based and hospitalization-based studies have estimated an incidence of Kawasaki syndrome ranging from 9 to 19 per 100,000 children younger than 5 years of age, approximately 4,248 hospitalizations with Kawasaki syndrome, of which 3,277 or 77% were for children under 5 years of age were estimated among children younger than 18 years of age in the United States in the year 2000. In 2006, the number of hospitalization for Kawasaki syndrome was 5,523 and the percentage of children under 5 years of age remained the same. What is Kawasaki syndrome? And all you need about to know about Kawasaki syndrome will be reported by the next reporter. Hi, my name is Rusha M. Kitko, and I'm reporting about the signs and symptoms of Kawasaki disease. Her signs and symptoms usually occur fever. Fever is considered when the temperature reaches above 37.5, and if given a drug, usually it is not very responsive to normal treatment with paracetam paracetamol or antiparasitic drugs. Second is symptoms is redness of the eyes or what they call conjunctivitis. Third is third changes in the mouth such as red throat or tongue or dry and cracked lips, also known as strawberry tongue because of necrotizing vasculitis. Necrotizing vasculitis, this disorder destroys blood vessel by inflammation. The fourth is blotchy red rash normally fades within one week. Changes in the hands or feet such as mild swelling or redness. The skin often peels on some of the fingers or toes after about two to three weeks. This is also what they call edema. The sixth is limp glands in the neck become swollen. That's all. Thank you. Hi, my name is Summerdale Rathbun and I am here to present the cause of Kawasaki disease. The cause of Kawasaki disease is unknown and it seems that symptoms are typical of a viral infection but it is not contagious. It may be an unusual or severe reaction to a common virus that usually causes lethal or no harm to most people. But no virus or other germ has been proved to cause this disease. As the causes of Kawasaki disease remain unknown, the illness is more accurately referred to as a Kawasaki syndrome. Like all autoimmune diseases, the cause of Kawasaki disease is presumably the interaction of genetic and environmental factors, possibly including an infection. The specific cause is unknown, but current theories center primarily on immunological causes for the disease. Evidence increasingly points as an infectious etiology. Hi, I'm Billy Ansabater and I'm here to present to you about the pathophysiology of Kawasaki disease. Despite the prominent preocupitaneous clinical findings that defines this illness, it is best regarded as generalized vasculitis that involves small 
to medium-sized arteries. When children develop Kawasaki disease, the walls of the arteries become inflamed. The endothelium protects the cellular wall and prevents blood cells from leaving. However, some triggers during the development of Kawasaki disease causes the endothelial cell to become activated and causes the cells and immune system to stick in the endothelium and live through the blood vessels wall. Inflammation in the vessel is caused by immune cells gathering in the cell and liberating chemical signals that recruit more cells and further, da further damage the vessel wall. IVIG or intravenous immunoglobulin interacts with these cells to quiet down the immune response. When the inflammation occurs in the vessel wall, it causes the artery to dilate about one third of children. In the early or acute stage of Kawasaki disease, the patient will experience dilated or widened coronary arteries. If the patient will receive IVIG, there will be a big chance to treat the inflammation. But if the treatment is late, there will be a big chance of developing aneurysm. The ballooning of the vessel causes the blood to swell and increases the risk of blood clot formation. If the blood clot continues to grow, it may result in the blockage of the blood vessel and heart attack in some cases. In many cases, scar tissue will begin to form an aneurysm and the blood vessel will be healed. However, blood vessel will never again completely normal. And many years after Kawasaki disease, scarring could lead to narrowing of the vessel and again, we present a risk for a heart attack. Complications As what I have said a while ago, the continuous formation of blood clots will lead to heart problems. If the patient will not receive the IVIG, it will lead to coronary artery aneurysm. This is the complications of coronary disease. Heart problems without treatment about one in five children who have Kawasaki disease develop inflammation of blood vessels to the, to the heart. Coronary arteries this can cause swelling of a section of an artery. What is a coronary artery aneurysm? This really causes no symptoms. Over time, it often goes away and the artery returns to normal. However, the wall of an aneurysm is weakened and the blood runs. Serious problems may develop in some children with an aneurysm. The most serious is the thrombosis. May develop in an aneurysm and damage the heart attack. An aneurysm can be detected by a heart scan, an echocardiogram. If an aneurysm does occur, it starts to develop a week or more often, or more after the fever and other acute symptoms begin. Treatment within 10 days of symptoms starting often prevents these complications. This is why it is important to diagnose and treat Kawasaki disease in early stages. Hi, my name is Kim Paolan from Group 3. I will be reporting for the medication of Kawasaki disease. Children with Kawasaki disease should be hospitalized and cared for by a physician who has experience with this disease. Aspirin, this is one of the few times aspirin is given to children. Aspirin helps to reduce the inflammation in the coronary artery. Gamma globulin this is an antibody mixture obtained from gamma blood. It is given by an infusion into the bloodstream. It is not clear how it works. It may modify the response of the immune system in some way to prevent. High doses with marked improvement usually noted within 24 hours. If the fever does not respond, additional dose may have to be considered. Treatment should be started as soon as the diagnosis is made to prevent damage. The coronary artery.
I'm Maria Pilinga from Group 3, presenting the prognosis. Without treatment, most children make a full recovery, but complications develop in some cases. With early treatment, complications are much less likely to develop. Repeat heart scans are usually advised over several weeks. If the heart scan is normal at 6 to 8 weeks after symptoms begun, then longer-term heart problems are thought to be unlikely. Long-term follow such as unusual checkup may be advised if aneurysm was detected as the long-term effect on the heart is not fully unknown. Laboratory evidence of increased inflammation combined with demographic features an incomplete response to IVIG therapy. The likelihood that aneurysm will resolve appears to be determined in large measure by the initial size of aneurysm, in which the smaller aneurysm includes being younger than a year old at the onset of Kawasaki disease. Fusiform rather than saccular aneurysm and aneurysm location in the distal coronary segment. Hey guys, my name is Douglas Miguel Tubas. I'm the leader of Group 3, and I'm giving you a conclusion for the Kawasaki disease. So, what is Kawasaki disease? Uh, Kawasaki disease is an uncommon condition that mainly affects children aged less than 5 years, especially male. It, it is an acute fibrovasculitis syndrome of an early childhood. Acute means it's a short term, and febra means a fever. Vasculitis is uh, inflammation of the blood vessels, and it's a syndrome, meaning it's, a, it's not just one disease growing, but it's a lot at the same time. Uh, it was first described at, in Japan by Dr. Tonosaku Kawasaki, a Japanese doctor. So here are some sample pictures of Kawasaki disease. Uh, it's affected children. It has uh, for the certain symptoms, you have the red lips. Okay, uh, signs and symptoms. You have high fever, which lasts more than five days. Uh, as Rusha said earlier, the fever is considered fever if the temperature reaches above 37.5. And uh, the special thing about Kawasaki disease is it's a recurrent fever that is not very responsive to the normal treatment of uh, paracetamol or ibuprofen. Uh, for the generic name, it's acetaminophen. There's a uh, redness in the eyes or cold co conjunctivitis. Uh, changes in the mouth, such as red throat or tongue or dry cracked lips. Oral mucosa become inflamed in red because of the damage to the blood vessels, uh, so it's called uh, acute febrile vasculitis, uh, the, vas the vessels in the mouth flame and there's death, there's necrotizing head in the mouth. And so it goes red, it's, it's most common symptoms or known for is the red strawberry tongue. So there's a bloodshed red rash normally fades within a week. There's a changes in the hands or feet such as mild swelling or redness, the skin often Feels off on some fingers or toes about two to three fingers. The swelling or it's also called edema uh, and also the lip nodes in the neck become swollen. Okay, what is the cause of Kawasaki disease? Uh, causes are known because it's, it is called an autoimmune disease. Most autoimmune disease doesn't have a cause because it's a your own body's defense me mechanisms attacking your own body. So it's generally the purity is between the factors of genetic factors versus the environmental factors. Um, so, of course, it's not contagious because it's not a bacteria or a virus. But sometimes um, it's an effect of a virus or infection that triggers the Kawasaki disease. Uh, it's not contagious. Uh, symptoms are typical of a viral infection. Uh, it's also important to notice the difference between the viral infection and a Kawasaki disease. Just remember Kawasaki disease 
uh, when you have fever, it's not responsive to uh, acetaminophen. It may be an unusual severe reaction to common virus that usually causes little or no harm to most people. But uh, no virus or other germs may be able to cause this. Okay, the main complication for um, Kawasaki disease, or the most rare or dangerous, is the heart problems. Um, without treatment, one in five children who have Kawasaki disease develop inflammation of blood vessels to the heart called coronary, coronary arteries. Um, this is can cause swelling of an artery section. So right now, Kawasaki's disease is the most common or main cause of heart disease acquired in childhood in the United States. A coronary artery aneurysm is usually has no symptoms. Over time, it often goes away and the artery returns to normal. However, the wall of an aneurysm is weakened and abnormal. A serious problem may develop in some children with an aneurysm. The most serious is that thrombosis clot may develop in the aneurysm and damage the heart in a heart attack, or you could go to the brain and cause stroke. An aneurysm can be detected by a heart scan and electrocardiogram if an aneurysm does occur. You start to develop a week or more after the fever and other acute symptoms began. So treatment for a Kawasaki disease, the one that helps a lot, is aspirin. This is one of the few times aspirin is given to children. Aspirin helps to reduce the inflammation in the coronary arteries. Other than that, aspirin is not good for children because of other complications that may occur. Also, one of the most important medications is intravenous gamma globulin. This is an antibody mixture obtained from a human blood and is uh, given by an infusion into the bloodstream. It's not clear how it works. It may modify the response of the immune system in some way to prevent. After 24 hours of infusing gamma globulin to the blood, after 24 hours, you could see some improvement. Uh, medication should be sorted as early as possible to prevent any complication. So, prognosis. Without treatment, most children make a full recovery by complication management develop in some cases. With early tr treatment, the complication is much less likely to develop like one in five children. Repeat heart scan are usually advised over several weeks if there is a, a heart scan is normal eight to six, six to eight weeks after symptoms again. Then long-term heart problems are totally unlikely. Long-term follow-ups is just annual checkup may be advised for aneurysm. Thank you for listening and that was Kawasaki.